Bonjour. Good morning. Je suis in Paris. No, je suis à Paris. <laughs> hi, hi, from Paris. Uh, we're going to talk today about some lack of hospitality in the hospitality industry. If you have been a full-time traveler and you have some gripes, this is the place to air your grievances. If you have, if you're considering full-time travel, if you're considering doing some nomadic bopping around the world, which I fully recommend, uh, then this may be a place where you can collect some lists of things to look out for. Um, or at least be prepared for, right? At least be prepared to expect some things. And uh, if neither of those things are interesting to you and, you're, and you also don't want to hear pe people complain for a little while, for an hour or two, I've already linked to some other videos in the description of, your, of this video. Go ahead and watch something else, okay? But today is a day for the airing of grievances. There is not a lot of hospitality in the hospitality industry. I've just gotten to experience Luxury experience after luxury experience after luxury experience. I've had back-to-back -back amazing uh, hospitality, and it really highlights the lack of hospitality that I've been experiencing up until recently. So let's gripe. <laughs> let's complain. Let's air some grievances. Let's say hi to Connie Perry. Hi, Mom. Can y'all see her in the corner? Okay, there she is. She's hiding behind the the fake flowers. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and get that started. How's everybody? Uh, hey, Alicia Renice, the artist. Good morning. Hello, Jazzy D. Good morning. Hi, Mom. Hello, Chanel. Hi, Dina St. Amour and Tiffany and Simi. How are you guys? Hey, Tracy Mills. Hey, Life with Sister Spice and Kemi Apple and Cir the Circle of Life. Hi, Rosina. Pisces Pratt, Shannon, Sacred Yogini. Hey, I'm a spirit artist. LA Teacher One, Elaine Gordon, Rennie, Sarah Wright, Aileen Brown, Adrian Devine, Chloe, Danica, Stacy. Hi, friends. Aurora. How's everybody? Sun, Venus, Moon. Everything good with everyone? Uh, everything's good here. No complaints. Uh, we just got to Paris last night. Um, and we went outside today and saw the Eiffel Tower. So that's it. That's all we've done. We're not going to be here. I think we're going to cut our Paris trip a little bit short, but I do know that there are some women here in Paris that it would be nice to see. So maybe we can figure out a way to get, I don't have a meetup plan, but maybe we can figure out a way to get a meal. Tanisha, Mercer, Latrice. So maybe we can figure something out um, before we get to, before we go to, whatchamacallit. I think we're going to leave Paris a little bit early and go down to spend more time in Provence. I think that's what's going to happen right now. Okay. I forgot to get a glass. Okay. I forgot to get a glass and I had a bottle of water from when we went outside. Okay. So this is what I'd like to talk about. If you have any grievances to air, feel free to go ahead and start typing things in the chat right now. <laughs> okay. Because I have some grievances to air. Um, the lack of hospitality among Airbnb guests and people who voluntarily put themselves in the hospitality industry, I mean, hosts, Airbnb hosts and people who voluntarily put themselves in the hospitality industry is a big pet peeve of mine. Um, you choose to be an Airbnb host, um, but if you're not into hospitality, like, why would you do that? <laughs> why would you do that? Why not do any of the other things where it's possible to make money? Anything else, putting yourself in hospitality when you don't want to do hospitality is a real problem to me. It's something that really, really upsets me, right? A lot of things in life roll off my back. <laughs> a lot of things in life I see and experience and take note of and move on. But people who get into the hospitality industry with no Interest in hospitality is annoying, especially when you see it done so well. There are times when you, you're like, oh, this person loves this. A thing that Airbnb is started at and is failing at is letting people be their own like hotelier, right? You can be your own hospitality industry person. Um, Airbnb originally was for having guests in your home, right? The original Airbnb was about having guests in your home. Um, especially, I started because the, own, the creators of Airbnb stayed on people's couches 
They wanted to elevate couch surfing, right? So it's really um, gotten, Airbnb has really drifted from what it originally was. It was originally about hospitality. I think there's a space, there's an opening for people who really enjoy hosting people in their homes. I think there's an opening for them to create something, create what Airbnb could have been. Um, because I have had amazing hospitality from Airbnb hosts before, like in 2015, 2016, when I saw the world on $40 a day, a lot of that was on in Airbnbs, right? With people who just liked hosting people. Uh, and I miss those days. But speaking of 2015, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Stephanie Perry. Hello. I'm a house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School. I'm the co-creator of Exodus Summit. And I help black women take a sabbatical or move abroad or bop around the world as a nomad, all while embracing ease. If these things sound good to you, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then turn on notifications, ring that notification bell, and you'll be notified when I post a new video or when I go live. Welcome. Okay, yeah, so that 2015 year of me taking my sabbatical, uh, bopping around the world on $40 a day, included a lot of staying in people's homes while they were there, right? Staying in a room, staying in a guest house, staying in, that's about it, another bedroom, a guest house, or whatever, a basement. Between that and, and um, house sitting, I have been the recipient of top level hospitality from people with not a whole lot, you know, like everyday people from a woman in the Philippines who lived on a house on stilts, right? On an island, her and her little boy lived in that house and she rented it out on Airbnb for I think $15 a night, rented out a room, right? Amazing hospitality from there to like where we just left, the Ritz Carlton yacht. Um, and so I've seen it done amazingly well. And it, that's what really upsets me about people who don't do it well, right? People who just get, are in, I don't know. I don't know what they think. I don't know. I can't imagine the mindset behind getting in the hospitality industry and not liking hospitality, right? When we were on this Ritz-Carlton yacht, when we were on this cruise, we got mixology certificates for completing our mixology lesson right? Little certificate that the mixologist made for us that was super cute. And Rashida was like, okay, now Stephanie, go behind the bar. And I was like, I don't do customer service, right? <laughs> I don't do things that require customer service. I have had my customer service time and I'm not interested. So I no longer do things in my world to make money that require me to also be the customer service representative. Right. It's why my businesses are not solopreneur businesses. I don't. Somebody else has to do that. Somebody else needs to be in my inbox. Somebody else needs to reply to customer service requests. I'm not doing it. Right. Imagine somebody who doesn't want to do hospitality opening an Airbnb. It's dumb. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And so I want to rant about it. Stop doing it. Stop. <laughs> Get out of the Airbnb business if you don't want to be in the hospitality industry. Okay. We can talk specifics. Okay. We're in Europe and the bottle caps stick onto the bottle. I know they think they're helping me, but they're not. I have too much nose for this. Okay. My nose does not play well with these kind of bottles. I meant to get, I should have gotten a glass. So, all right. So let me tell you a few signs that you probably should not be in the hospitality industry, even though you're an Airbnb host. Uh, number one is if you don't want to trust the people who are staying in your home, don't do it. If you don't, if you have set up a whole bunch of illegal stuff like cameras or uh, whatever, if you can't trust people to run out your space and take care of your space, then don't be in hospitality. If you don't trust the stranger, a lot of people don't trust strangers, right? If you don't trust the stranger, don't get into hospitality. If you want to nickel and dime people for things, if you want to charge them on top of the cleaning fee, you want to charge them extra, or you want to make them clean your house before they leave, put the, I, I have been known to put the sheets in the washing machine. It's a thing that sometimes I still do, even when they don't require it. It's from house sitting. It's a leave, leave over from house being a house sitter. 
But if you're going to require a whole bunch of extra demands from people, then you're not supposed to be in hospitality. Because that's not hospitality. Hospitality is not now make your, take, make your bed, <laughs> now take out the trash. You are the, you're the host. You should be hospitable to me. Do those things for me. I'm already paying you, right? I'm not somebody's friend who needed a place to stay at the last minute. I'm paying you. You should not be on Airbnb. You're not a hospitable person, right? If you don't, if you want to charge for a luxury price for your place, but then give the cheapest, penniest products inside of the house, you're not into hospitality. If you're charging luxury prices, them sheets and towels should feel good on my body. If you're charging luxury prices, your hand soap should be good hand soap and not that hospital stuff, (laughs) right? Go out and buy a nice bottle of hand soap. If that's going to cut, if that's going to remove your profits, that's your fault. You shouldn't be charging what you're charging. Charge enough so that if it's a hospitable, if it's a luxury looking place, there should be some luxury. Um, I now this is going to lean into the decor part. The luxury, the um, my I, the fake plant thing is so I can't stand it. Fake p- plants and flowers, that's a decor issue, not a hospitality issue. But I also want to gripe about those things. I can't stand them. We're in a house filled with fake flowers and fake plants. And the woman lives within walking distance of this place. She was fine. She was nice. I don't have any real complaints about the place. Except that she has a lot of fake p- plants and flowers, not one real plant or flower. And also, she didn't turn the heat on before we got here. We got here yesterday about 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and it was cold. It's only 55 degrees in Paris. Uh- <laughs> we are stupid for leaving Lisbon. Okay, so I'm willing to say that. We're really stupid for leaving Lisbon, where it was 75 or 80 degrees, to come to Paris, where it's 55 and raining. Okay, but the heat should have been on. Should have been on when we got here. So heat that's a radiator system, which sometimes takes no time to heat up a place, but in some places really takes a while to heat up. Uh, hospitality, please think of us. Turn the heat on before we get here. Those are my only complaints about this lady. I I don't have any real complaints about this lady. I'm just saying, in general, a lot of people are in the hospitality space who have no uh, hospitality gene. (laughs) They don't have it. They don't have the hospitality. They don't have it. Josette says the cameras are ridiculous. Yeah. If If you're charging, part of that is you're not charging. You're char- you want to get in on the bargain basement clientele, but then you can't trust the people. Charge an amount so that if something goes wrong every few guests, you got it. Or don't do Airbnb. Don't do Airbnb. It's really easy to not do Airbnb. <laughs> it's really easy to not do Airbnb and leave it for people who are really into hospitality. Shy Girls TV, yeah, they want you to pay and be the maid. That's not hospitality. Hotels don't do that. (laughs) The hospitality industry doesn't do that. Don't do that. Massage on mission. Hi, hospitality begins with the transaction. I think that's the transaction with the transaction. Yeah, start, start early. Start from the beginning. You don't have to. Airbnb doesn't have to be people staying in your own home. But I think that you should treat people, treat your guests like they're staying in your own home, even if it's not your own home, right? Very, it's been a long time since I've booked an Airbnb and it's actually been that person's home. Uh, Airbnb has really let people take it over and turn it into something that it, I don't think it was intended to be. Um, but there's gotta be a way to bring it back. Bring it back or, we go, or create something else. Uh, I'm thinking about spending some money on Verbo and seeing if those hosts are di- are better. I know that a lot of people who host on or Airbnb also ho- host on Verbo, but maybe they have a they they provide a different level of hospitality over there, right? Love Park Connection. Yeah, why am I cleaning your house? Like, think about it. Think about it. You're in the hospitality industry. Part of the hospitality industry is cleaning, right? <laughs> It is the cleaning and care of an upkeep of a place. If you don't want to do that, or you don't want to pay somebody to do that, then you shouldn't be in the hospitality industry, right? Airbnb needs to weed out a lot of people who have no real desire to be in the hospitality industry. They just want the money grab. Lenora Wilson, just a money grab like healthcare. Very few people care about others today. 
The reason that this is a thing that we can talk about is that there are people, the reason we recognize the people who are failing at hospitality is that people are, there are people who are doing it ex extremely well. Same with health healthcare. The reason we know healthcare in the U.S. is bad is because people are getting good healthcare elsewhere, right? So I don't want to say that it's all bad. I want to say that the good people really shine a light on the people who are doing it wrong, right? You can go pretty much anywhere in the world and get better health care and get, like, care in health care. If you leave the United States and you go to another country, Latin America in particular, because that's where I have experience, uh, you can get care with your health care. Right? There are people who are doing these jobs because they actually care. They're actually into it. They actually want to communicate with you, talk with you, stay updated on your progress, WhatsApp you. <laughs> right? You can get care in health care. That's how we know how bad it is in the United States. Same with hospitality. You can get hospitality on Airbnb. The good people really shine a light on the bad. Leisure and Lace, the owners are renting homes in Mexico. They don't trust the renters, have a long laundry list of requirements. Right, don't do it. If you have to do all of that, don't do it. Don't do it. Because somebody else is not requiring all of this, is not requiring all these gymnastics from their guests and their, and their, their, their people, their renters, right? Okay. Yeah, the ABX girl, they're doing that for the money and they have to pay the second mortgage on that second home loan. Yeah, people who rent a place or buy a place specifically to put on Airbnb, that was not Airbnb's original mission, right? That was not Airbnb's original goal or plan. It really sincerely was hosting people in your space, in your home. Uh, it was just a step, a few steps above couch surfing, a way to make to provide hospitality to people in your home. But people have ruined it. You know, people will capitalist anything. <laughs> people will turn anything into a real capital and make you hate it. People will make you hate it. Uh, I have sometimes the ability to see some, to look at things and be like, oh, here's, here's how you can make money doing this. <laughs> right? Here's how you could, uh, yeah, here's how you could like turn this into a more capitalist thing. That doesn't mean we have to do it that way. Right? You can make money by hosting people in your own, own home. Pamela Holt, who was a speaker at Exodus Summit 2022, just hosted a conference on that. She talked in Exodus Summit about creating an Airbnb inside of your own home, right? Hosting people in your own home. So you don't got to go out and rent another place and then nickel and dime people on cheap toilet paper because you can't afford the Airbnb that you're paying for, you know? Uh, she did a whole conference. I want to say less than a month ago, and it's probably still available. I'm just going to link. I'm, I'm not going to link. I'm just going to tell you. It's, she, her business is called the Happy Host Academy. She's a black woman, D-E-M-Y, from Chicago. The Happy Host Academy by Pam. If you Google it, if you're interested in hospitality, and you're interested in hosting people in your own home, whether it's when you're there or when you're away, she is a resource, but uh, this is not for everybody. If you've never thought about hospitality, right? If you've never thought about being in the hospitality industry, it's not for you. Airbnb is wonderful. It's what an, what an equalizer for people who are like, oh my gosh, my dream is to open a hotel or b and But I don't have a million dollars or $20 million to get it started. Airbnb really did help those people live out their hospitality dreams. But, you know, other people go in and ruin stuff. <laughs> Alicia said capitalism ruins everything. Can ruin the best thing, right? The idea, I stayed in people's homes while they were there. I've had great hospitality, but, man, Airbnb let people ruin things. It really let people ruin things. Once it realized that people were buying and renting extra properties to put on Airbnb, something should have happened, right? Now they've not only ruined Airbnb for the people who love it, but they ruined whole city's real estate markets, right? It could have been, could have been. When we talk about another world is possible, there is something that could have been with Airbnb, 
right? It could have been amazing. I don't think it's too late for another platform. It might be too late for Airbnb, but I don't think it's too late for somebody else to do this right. Adrian Devine had a beautiful experience in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. The, hair, the home was immaculate. The host brought me traditional Korean breakfast on a tray. That's beautiful. Yeah, I've, you, there are people who you know, like this, is, they love hospitality, right? They love hosting people. They love making sure people have a wonderful experience on their property and in their town or their city or their state or their country, right? We just left Bermuda where it was uh, evident that people in Bermuda have a vested interest in you loving Bermuda. Evident, they want you to love it, right? If they don't want you to miss the good stuff. They want to tell you where to go and what to eat and what to do. A woman, <laughs> Rashida and I walked into a clothing store, just being nosy, right? Walk, just walking through a clothing store, have no intention to buy anything. A woman stopped us who I, at first, when she, when she who worked behind the counter. When I first saw her, I didn't think she was going to say hello. Not only did she say hello, but she was like, now, have you been to Crystal Caves? I know you've been to caves before and caverns before, but this is not like that. You have to go. You have to go. You're going to love it. It's like no other cavern in the world. And then she was like, okay, and then here's a restaurant you eat and an ice cream, so ice cream shop. Right? <laughs> they had a vested interest in making sure that we enjoyed Bermuda. Hospitality, right? Which makes it really evident when you go places like Mauritius where they don't care about you. Right? Nobody cared in Mauritius whether I enjoyed anything about Mauritius. Right? My Airbnb host was nice. And she said she was Mauritian. She said she was um, white. She was a white woman. Or actually, I can't really remember. I think she was a white woman. Uh, yeah, she was. She was. Uh, she was the only person who cared. The local Mauritian people, the people, the other Mauritian people. No, they don't care. Right. They don't care. You walk into the restaurant, their hotel, their tea store, their tea shop. They don't care. They don't care if you like it. They don't care if you enjoy it. They don't care. Not, not only are they not recommending other things, but they don't care if you enjoy the thing that you paid them for. <laughs> you, right? Bermuda, Mauritius, two very polar opposite islands. Both beautiful, but very opposite in the hospitality space, right? Leisure and Lace, you're right about the cheap toilet paper. Come on. Is this going to really destroy your profits? Listen, I don't even care if you start off with good toilet paper, but stock up on cheap toilet paper. I don't even care about that. Give me a good roll of Charmin. Right? <laughs> you don't have to keep the Charmin flowing, but give me one good roll of Charmin before we go to the paper toilet paper. Right? I stay in a lot of Airbnbs for 30 days at a time. Um, and I don't expect them to stock me with 30 days of paper products, but it would be nice. I don't necessarily expect 30 days of paper towels and 30 days of toilet paper, although that is what I'm paying for. I'm clear. That is what I've paid you for. But, you know, I can understand them not having it there. I'm, I don't gripe and complain about it. But the one I am paying you for, the one you did stock, can it not be paper? Can it be good toilet paper? Can it be the toilet paper that you would want to use? Right? That's hospitality. A little bit of hospitality. It goes a long way. It goes a long way. All right. Anything else we want to talk about in the Airbnb space before we switch over to hotels? Uh, those are my main complaints. Expecting, not, not really want, getting into Airbnb and not wanting to do hospitality. That's my main, it's, it's an overall overarching complaint. It hits a lot of different things from the way the welcome happens. You don't have to be there to let me in. In fact, I prefer that you not be there. But, you know, a lot of hosts want to be there. This host came to lock, to let us in. From what, the way that you do the welcome process and the, you know, the sign-in, log-in process to the way that I leave and you do the exit and the cleaning process to everything in between, it's really clear that most of these people are not into hospitality. La, la. <laughs> says, I don't do Airbnbs. If I'm going on vacation, I want a, the luxury of a proper hotel. The problem is I travel for, I've traveled full time, full time since September of 2015. I cannot stay in a hotel 
Now, if I'm in Costa Rica for 90 days, I'm not staying in a hotel for 90 days, right? There's no hotel that's going to be able to be in, within my budget and comfortable for 90 days. I could get a hotel within my budget, <laughs> but I'm not going to like it. Or I could get a comfortable hotel, but I'm not going to be able to pay for it. Airbnb really does fill a need. A lot of us are out nomading. A lot of us are nomading. We live nowhere. We travel always, travel full time. There's no hotel that's going to be, unless you have, I make good money. You'd have to make good, 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 good money for, a full, for your full-time life to be hotel. Right. Now, people do it. We On the boat, on the cruise, we met a man who lives in the Ritz-Carlton residences in Atlanta. Right. So it's, it's, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying I am not at a place. And most of the women on this channel, even though we like luxury, we like good, nice things, we're probably not in a place to live in hotels. Right. That's the space that Airbnb fills. A lot of us are either remote workers or self-employed entrepreneurs or not retired or semi-retired, uh, mini-retired, right? Retired for now. Living in a hotel for 90 days would not work for me. That's why I have so much experience with Airbnbs. If you're going on a one-week vacation, you can any, everything is open to you. But if you're going to be in Costa Rica for 90 days, right? I was in Mauritius for 28 days. There's no hotel that's going to satisfy that. There's no hotel. Either I could get luxury or I could be within a, a, a budget that I could afford, but I couldn't get both. Not on Mauritius, right? It's got to be, for me, this is why I'm complaining, because for me, it's got to be something like Airbnb and VRBO. They have a real place in my life. <laughs> this is why we're talking about it. There's a lot of women on this channel who are not traveling on vacations. We live by traveling, right? And so... We just want, we need people in the hospitality industry to do better because this is our everyday life. Hospitality impacts our everyday life when you are traveling every day. Hospitality ruins, <laughs> can ruin your daily experience when you're traveling daily. Okay. 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 So also, so while before we get here, Mo, the check-in times at Airbnbs also can be ridiculous. I understand. I would rather, listen, a thing a wonderful host could do is not book back to back. Give yourself a day. If it's so imperative that you clean this house and get it ready for the next guest, I mean, can't you just have a guest check in the next, not have that day available? instead of pushing me out the door at 10 a.m.? What wonderful hospitality that would be. If I could check in by noon and not have to check out until noon, if you could give me a full 24 hours in your home, that's hospitality, right? Just because it's a way that hotels do things doesn't mean that that's how an Airbnb has to do it. Let people, let people pay for 24 hours and let them stay for 24 hours. And then you don't have a guest until the next day. Is that going to hurt you that much? Especially because a lot of places have a three-day minimum, right? If you've got a three-day minimum, is it going to hurt you that much to have this day off, no guest here? That would be a wonderful thing that they could do. Um, let you pay for 24 hours. Especially in some places where you know, like, some, like Mauritius, there are only a handful of flights that fly into Mauritius. You know most of your guests are coming in at these times a day. When I got in, people said, did you fly on something? And I said, no, I flew on Air Mauritius. Did you fly Air Mauritius? I said, no, I flew on Emirates. So they knew what time I landed on the island, right? Some of these places, you know what time people are coming in. Some of these places are, um, like Lisbon is a good uh, cruise ship docking destination. A lot of people get off the cruise ship at eight or nine in the morning, got nowhere to go to check in until 3 p.m. What a wonderful hospi hospitable thing an Airbnb host could do to say, check in, let me know what time you're checking in. You have 24 hours before you check out. Would it hurt you that much? Especially if you charge an amount of money that's reasonable. 
Would it kill you to give me good toilet paper and 24 hours of time in that place? <laughs> right? Check in at 3 and check out at 10. Not hospitality. That's not hospitality. Oh, my gosh. David says, don't get me started on the host with multiple units and not managing any of them right. Right? <laughs> this is mixed up with that. You're not good at this. <laughs> You're not good at it. Get out of this industry. There's got to be something else. Hospitality is not for anyone. It's very specific. I told Rashida when she said, Get now you have that little mixology certificate. Now get behind the bar. I, said, I don't do customer service. I'm not. Mm -mm. I've given up. <laughs> I have handed in my customer service badge. I'm not doing it. Right? We're not asking for the world. 24 hours is what we're asking for. We're not asking for the world. In Johannesburg, the housekeepers came in. I think we had to be out by 10 or eight, whatever, 10 or 11. Housekeepers were there in the house 15 minutes early, sitting on the sofa. So you know what that means. It means that I forgot to put my earrings on. I'm rushing to get out of the house. I'm annoyed. I was more annoyed than rushing because I'm always, I don't rush very well. <laughs> I don't have the, I don't rush very well. I wasn't really rushing to get us out of the house, but I was annoyed. In fact, I might have started moving a little bit slower. I was annoyed that the housekeepers were there 15 minutes early sitting on the sofa talking about we need to get started because we have more people coming. Not hospitality. Then I left my earrings. I only have one pair. I'll travel with one pair of earrings. My little gold, these are gold, one little pair of gold earrings. So... Then now the host has to become hospitality because I got to send somebody on Uber. You know, Uber will deliver packages. I got to send an Uber to come to go back to the house, pick up my earrings and bring them to me at the airport because I'm not leaving my gold earrings. <laughs> right. Like a little bit of grace would have saved all of that. A little bit of grace. It's not, I've already paid. It's not my problem that somebody else is coming to check in. Meanwhile, we go to this hotel in Lisbon after we get off the cruise ship at 9.30 in the morning. We were the last. <laughs> the cruise docked at 6.45, 7 o'clock. I guess probably by 7.30, some people were off the boat, I would guess. We went to breakfast, right? We're going to get our last meal on that ship. We went to breakfast. And we were the last people in the breakfast, uh, in the restaurant. We go off, we get off the thing, and there's a big room where all the luggage has been sat. And literally, there was only two other suitcases after we got our suitcases. So, right? so we were the next to the last people off that boat. Still, it was only 9.30, 10, maybe 10 o'clock. So we get to the um, our hotel, and it's Lisbon. We're really close to the cruise ship terminal. They know that people are coming in all hours of the day. They let us get in our rooms. We were probably in our rooms by 1030. Hospitality. It didn't take much for us to be like, this hotel is nice. And then when we told Herman Dow and Marilyn that our hotel was good to us and that we liked it, they moved and, and checked in there. It doesn't take much to do good hospitality, right? He was like, let me call the housekeeper, see if these two rooms are available. They were available. Now, it was Monday. It was a Monday instead of like a Thursday or Friday or Saturday. So it worked. Um, hospitality. It didn't take a whole lot. We're not asking for the world. We're asking for hospitality. Mara says Lisbon's on her list. So being back in Lisbon reminded me so much of why I love it so much. It's so pretty. And we're in Paris, which is not very far away, but the weather is significantly different. Lisbon, Lisbon's weather, 70s and 80s, sunny. We did, it rained the day we left, but it had been 70 and 80s and sunny. We get to Paris and it's 40s and 50s. We're not that far away, but it reminded me why Lisbon is so wonderful. So put it on your list. Go. Go. Family Goes Global says, who has the traveling kimono now? So there's a, uh, my friend Katrina bought herself a kimono in Morocco. That's beautiful. Francis wants the kimono from Katrina. So I took the kimono from Katrina in South Africa. 
I wore it in Mauritius and on the cruise ship, took some pictures. Uh, and now I passed the kimono to Rashida. I don't think I've told them this. I don't know if they're here. I don't, they're not here because Rashida's coaching and uh, Katrina is in from Burnout to Bliss and Rashida is coaching from Burnout to Bliss right now. So they're not even here. So Katrina probably doesn't yet know that Rashida now has the kimono and Rashida is going to take the kimono to Fiji and Francis will get the kimono from, from Rashida in Fiji. That will be the next exchange. That'll be the next kimono turnover. So the traveling kimono is traveling. Rashida is in Amsterdam, and she's also going to Turkey, and she's going all around the UK. So the kimono is going to get to see a lot of Europe. It's good. Shell says, I want to get a mixology certificate. Girl, it was a piece of paper that the mixologist printed out. Okay, it was just... <laughs> So Stephanie Perry completed, no, this is for Stephanie Perry for excellence in mixology. It don't mean nothing, okay? <laughs> but Michael, the bartender, the, Michael, the mixologist, was kind enough to give us all those certificates. The four, four of the five of us took the mixology class. I made a mar margarita, and we learned to make two versions of the old fashioned. Champagne cocktail, the champagne cocktail, which I drank so many times on Emirates. Uh, I feel like there was more. And then he made up, his, he created his own drink called Provence, and he made that for us. We didn't make the Provence, but we learned how to make those four. I think that was it. Yeah, I think those were the four. And he gave us certificates. That cruise, so I did not, I underestimated how much thing, how many things I would want to do on the cruise ship. Because it was a really small cruise ship. It was a, they call it a yacht, right? It was 170 people on board. Uh, I thought, I went in there like, I'm going to read two books. We're on 11 days, right? We're on an 11-day cruise. I'm going to read two books. I might even write a book, right? Write a very, very, very rudimentary draft of a book, right? Uh, I wanted to read. I wanted to write. I wanted to work out every morning in, in the gym. It was too much to do. I could <laughs> I didn't have any free time. I went to mixology class. I went to Sudoku, the Sudoku challenge and the trivia challenges. I went to uh, salsa dancing lessons. I went to Latin night. I went to the white party. I went to macrame one time. Everybody else went to macrame and the arts and crafts lessons multiple times. I went once. Listen, that's not my ministry. That's not my gift. <laughs> It really, it, I really underestimated how many of things on the cruise ship I would want to do. That three o'clock rule is, come on, come on. One of the things that I have done lately is be loyal to Marriott Bonvoy. And so I have elite status, something silver. I'm only silver elite, but after the cr cruise, I should be bumped up to gold elite, I guess, or more. Uh, I have elite status with Marriott Bonvoy, so most of the time when I get to a hotel, they get me in there. It doesn't matter. Most of the time when I get there, they check me in, and when I want a late checkout, they check me out. Even when I went to see Beyonce, which was a time when the hotel seemed to be full, uh, the JW Marriott in Houston seemed to be full. They got me in a room in less than 15 minutes, I, because I went. I thought I was going to get food and then get checked in. And they came and were like, no, they sent the thing on my phone before I even ordered my food. I sat down and ordered my drink before I could even order my chicken sandwich. Uh, they were like, your room is ready. So loyalty has helped me get better hospitality. But like some of this should be basic. Some of it should be the basics. Losing a full day. You lose so much time with check-in and check-out. Right, especially when you're traveling back to back. If you're doing three or four cities in, in two or three weeks, you're losing a lot of travel time with the check-in, check-out times. You're losing a lot of time just sitting around waiting or going to restaurants when you know you don't even really want to eat, but it's one o'clock and you can't check in till three and you have your stuff and you're tired, too tired to go sightseeing, right? It's an it's a it's an annoying thing. I'm just scrolling in the comments. Okay. All right. Anything else with Airbnbs before we move over to hotels? 
Roshni says, do you think you're very aware of it because you just got off the Ritz-Carlton and the amazing hospitality you experienced there? I'm thinking about it because of that, but I, this has always been my beef. I've been saying, ain't no hospitality in the hospitality industry. This is something that has always stood out to me because I understand hospitality is not easy, just like customer service. I did customer service for years. I was a credit analyst, and part of that was customer service, and a fraud analyst. I was a pharmacy technician in a hospital two different times. I understand customer service and the demands of it, and I understand it's not for everyone. And if you don't want to do it, you shouldn't do those jobs, right? So that's why it stands out so much for me in hospitality. If you don't want to do hospitality, you shouldn't be in the hospitality industry, right? Since we started planning Exodus Summit meetups, which was, the first one was 2022. Yes, the first one in Cancun was 2022. We've been, I've been even more aware of the lack of hospitality in the hospitality industry, but it's always been my beef. I've, I've always had that beef. Because I just, you don't have to be here. <laughs> You don't have to be in hospitality. No, you don't have to host and be an Airbnb host. You don't have to be a hotel general manager or a front desk person, right? Not too long ago, I checked into a Marriott at either the Newark, New Jersey airport or JFK airport. I checked into a Marriott at an airport because I had an overnight layover. And I walked up to the counter and the woman, you know, says, may I have your passport or whatever. Then the next person, if she finishes with me, she moves over to another debt terminal and help the next person walks up and she says, hi, welcome to Marriott. My name is so-and-so. How can I help you? Right? Now, there's her at this one and another woman at this one. And I turned to the other woman and I said, you see, do you hear how she just said good morning to that woman? She never greeted me. She just said, let me have your passport. Right? I want hospitality. That's always been my thing. It's always been a thing that I am annoyed by. Because you don't have to do it. <laughs> you don't have to be in the hospitality. You should choose to be in it and do it. I don't do customer service. I'm over it. I was really good at customer service. But I was, I'm over it. I don't want to do it. Hey, plant your seeds of transformation. Hi, Donna. Lisbon's definitely on my list. I found we have ancestral roots from there. Definitely want to go with good walking shoes. Yeah, good walking shoes. Lisbon is wonderful. I was like, oh, yeah, that's why I love it here. It's so good. It's wonderful. I don't know how to explain it to you except that it's beautiful. A lot of places, you'd be surprised, most of you, I think, would be surprised how ugly San Jose, Costa Rica is. Because a lot of Latin America is pretty cute, right? A lot of the cities have at least really cute neighborhoods. If not, if it's not the whole city that's cute, you know, there are some really beautiful parts of Mexico. Mexico City, uh, the small towns in uh, Lake, like Lake Chapala and Ajijic and whatever, uh, Morelia, which is kind of a city town. Right? There are some places where you're like, oh, this is just pretty. Guanajuato, the houses are like sherbet colored. Just pretty. And then you get to San Jose, Costa Rica, and you're like, yuck, this is ugly. It is not pretty at all. So being here, being, I mean, being there, being in Lisbon, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what it's like to be in a place that's pretty on the outside. 60 solo mystic traveler. Hawaii is about to ban Airbnb because they're having a housing shortage. A lot of people have, a lot of city, I don't know about a lot, but other cities in the U.S. have effectively banned Airbnbs, um, especially as third party, not, as, especially as a, that's, have banned people from having Airbnbs that are not your home. Some cities have gotten involved because Airbnb didn't do a good job of handling things. Some cities have made it harder and harder for you to have a, a second property and turn it into an Airbnb. I think that's very, very late. But right, it's the right answer, but it's, they're very, very late to that. Airbnb, this is something that Airbnb could have fixed a long time ago, right? You shouldn't be able to log on to Airbnb in a city 
and see vacancies in places where you know the, re- the everyday people can't afford to live. You shouldn't be able to see Airbnbs available in places and know that the people in that place can't afford to live in that, in that city, right? But go to San Francisco, type in Airbnb available. Look, in, look up Airbnbs in San Francisco and look how much available, how many available homes are just sitting there when the people who live there and work there can't afford it. This is something that Airbnb should have been able to fix a long time ago. Because it, it seriously, it did start with hosting people in your home. And it should, it should have stayed there. So I do still do rooms. On Airbnb, you can book a room instead of a home. And when I'm traveling alone. Now, COVID, co- I have done rooms. I have stayed in rooms since COVID, but I've booked them less since COVID. But you can book a room now. It used to be if you booked a room you are almost guaranteed to be in the home with the host. Now you book a room, it still might be a second property or a third or 10th or 80th property that that person owns. It still might not be. The people you're sharing that space, space with might still be other guests instead of the host. But it really used to be stay in people's homes, right? It's the kid's room and while you're there, the kids stay together, right? In can't remember where in Mexico was the last time. I can, I can remember myself sitting on their roof. They had like a little roof porch thing. I remember sitting there and recording videos and stuff. And it was their kid, the son's, maybe the daughter's room. And while, the, while I was there, the daughter and the son stayed in the same room. They had bunk beds in there. Um, that's how it used to be. In the Airbnb I stayed in in Brazil, it was during the World Cup. And they took the son's bedroom, which was the biggest bedroom anyway. And they put two bunk beds and a full-size bed in there, and they turned it into like a hostel room. That's how Airbnb, and they, so they were in the house. The husband, the wife, the son was in the house. The wife was like going to a thing. She was Brazilian. She was black Brazilian, and he was something else Brazilian. And she was going, she was so, she was so dressed up so pretty in her white dress. Uh, and I wanted her to invite me to where she was going. <laughs> I'm like, if I ask her enough questions, she was going to be like, do you want to come? But she didn't invite me. She was going to a candomblé event, all dressed in white. And I asked her a million questions and I pulled out my phone. I started Googling stuff. But she never, she didn't invite me to come. She was like, boundaries. (laughs) You stay in your place, I'll go over to my place. Uh, But that's how Airbnb used to be and it was wonderful. ADHD cutie on solo travel duties. Hi, got a new name. The kimono has traveled more than I have. (laughs) That's not true because you've been around. You've been around. You've been house sitting all over the place. That's not true. But the kimono is having a good time. And it's well made for it to be something that Katrina picked up in a soup or something in Morocco. I've washed it and the little balls are doing fine and something happened to it. I did something and I was like, oh, the little balls held up fine. It might have been just washing and drying it. It might have been just from washing and drying it. I was like, oh, it's got got little individual balls sewn on the bottom around the hem. And they're all still there. So it's well made for it to be, um, you know, something that she just picked up on on the street. All right. Okay. Okay. So we've talked about our hospital. Any other gripes that we have? Anything else we want to talk about? If you are on your way to long-term travel, if you're about to start uh, digital nomad life, traveling full-time, bopping around, then some of this is just, thing. some of these are just things you need to look out for, right? We're not saying long-term travel is terrible because of the lack of hospitality. We're saying you need to, if hospitality matters to you, you do need to take some extra steps. So things that I do include reading the reviews. It's boring advice, but I read the reviews. What do they say about the actual host? It's one thing to say the house looks like it looked in the pictures and the good location, but do they have anything to say about the host? Any indication that I'm going to walk in there and find real hand soap, 
<laughs> and not the hospital grade stuff. Any indication I'm going to find toilet paper I'm going to like, right? Any indication that there's anything in there that was just a nice hospitable touch. In Cape Town, South Africa, there were seven or seven of us in the Airbnb that we went to after the hotel. And she had the nicest cappuccino maker, coffee maker, right? Made a good cappuccino. It was really nice. And there was milk in the fridge. I didn't know that there was milk already in the refrigerator. I knew there, there was coffee there. I didn't know that there was already milk in the refrigerator. I ordered, we ordered some milk to be delivered with our groceries. We had groceries delivered when we got there. Uh, but she had the, I mean, Katrina and I were like, oh. How many cappuccinos are we going to drink today? <laughs> right? it, made, as it made the best cappuccinos I've had. Seriously, I'm not kidding. I had, I think I had vanilla extract with me. I think it just made a really good cappuccino. It was so, you know, fancy that the housekeeper, the housekeeper who lived on the, on the property had to come and show us how to use it the first time. Uh, but what a nice step, right? What a nice thing to include when you didn't have to. She didn't have to. She could have had a little French press and called it a day. But that cappuccino thing, cappuccino maker, really helped us enjoy our stay and experience a little extra hospitality. Ah, uh, ADHD cutie on single mom, on, on, no, on solo travel duties, you changed your name on me, says Mary Bonvoy is marvelous, darling, simply, simply marvelous. I'm glad you've had great experiences with them. I've been up and down. The first time my mom and I stayed at the Ritz-Carlton, we stayed at the, my mom, dad, and I stayed at the Ritz-Carlton in Marina Del Rey. And I was like, well, I've had better hospitality at the Best Western, at La Quinta. My mom used to love La Quinta. We've had better hospitality at the La Quinta. I don't remember anybody inside of the, the Ritz-Carlton saying anything to us the entire whatever time we were there, four days or whatever. Except Montel Williams. Except Montel Williams. Montel Williams checked in while we were there, and he was gracious enough to let my mom, to take a picture with my mom, even though he really had to go, he said, I really have to go to the bathroom. He took a picture with her, but I don't remember any desk person, any, anyone, anyone on the property saying good morning or are you enjoying your stay? Basics, a basic greeting, right? I don't remember, there no zero hospitality. And I said, I was like, we've had better hospitality at La Quinta. You know what I mean? That was my first experience with Ritz Carlton. Uh, but this yacht has outdone, <laughs> has changed my mind. <laughs> That's all under the Marriott Bonvoy umbrella, right? It's been hit or miss for me. It's been hit or miss. When it's really not all that hard, you know? We're not asking for, I'm not asking for a whole lot more than a nice greeting. A nice surprise after we checked into this hotel in Lisbon uh, that night for turn down service. Or no, they didn't do turn down service. They, I don't think I don't think they did turn down service. If they did, I always had my do not disturb on or something. But that evening before bedtime, they brought each room the first night two little pastiche de nada, the little pastel, the little custard tart, which I love, and a bottle of something spirits. I got a cherry liqueur, a cherry liqueur, little tiny bottle of cherry liqueur and two little shot glasses. Now, Herman Dowdle said she got mezcal or something. They gave her a different beverage. Uh, but like, what a delightful way to welcome someone, to show someone a little bit of hospitality, to surprise people. That was delightful, right? Um, especially coming off of the Ritz Carlton cruise and going into that hotel, we had we knew we thought we had to lower expectations, but we really didn't because we got good service in that hotel. Ah, La says Hilton does not get her late checkout with elite status. Marriott does do that for me, and I like I said, I was just at Silver Elite. Now I should be something else, gold probably, or 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 more. But I was only at Silver Elite status and. Um, uh, yeah, I almost I'll, I can't remember the last time I've asked for a late checkout and not gotten it, and most and, and also get checked in whenever I get there. When I get there, I can get checked in. I can't remember the last time that hasn't happened. Yeah, so that is helpful. So maybe they are better than Hilton. <laughs> maybe maybe you need to trade loyalties. 
Yeah, I I have had that happen. It even says it on the thing, on the thing. Yeah. Yes, La says, wonderful customer service in bed and breakfast and boutique hotels from her experience. That's right. That's right. And so that's why we need to read the reviews, read the reviews. Sometimes going into, because the hotel that we stayed in in Lisbon was a, I don't know. It was a chain, but it was a Lisbon chain that I'd never heard of. And it wasn't owned by any of the brands that I've ever stayed in before. Uh, they had two, ver two different hotels diagonal from each other on the, on the waterfront. I'm going to tell you where we stayed. Pestana. Pestana. We stayed at the Pestana Rua Augusta, but right diagonal from it was the Pestana CR7. And there are several Pestanas around town. P-E-S-T-A-N-A. Very good. Now, they didn't have a, a luggage person. They didn't have a bell person, and that would have been really helpful. But uh, very, well, they brought the luggage to the room, but they didn't have anyone to help us get the luggage from the curb to the room. Very helpful. Uh, very good service. Very good service. Donna says, I'm remote customer service. I can do hospitality well. Yeah, you, it's, 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 I think most people are self-aware enough to know if they are into it or not, right? Because there's a difference between can do and want to do. I can do customer service on 10, right? I was a credit analyst. I was a pharmacy technician. I was a, uh, the other thing, fraud person, fraud analyst at credit card issuers. I worked for credit card issuers or hospitals my whole time. The whole time I had a job, except for like one-off jobs. Actually, I've done a lot of jobs. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, except for when I did this, except for when I was a waitress, except for when I, right. But most of the time, I worked in customer-facing roles. Uh, so customer service is a thing I know I'm good at, but I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to be. <laughs> I don't want to be. So Roshni says, Glamazini is Roshni. Hi. She says, I'm taking notes. My dream life includes a rental or retreat center in the Virgin Islands. Yes, so take notes, okay? We want good toilet paper. We want the hand soap that you enjoy using, <laughs> right? Please don't burn my skin off with the hand soap. Uh, we want some real plants and flowers in a place. I'd rather have one real plant than 50 fake plants. That may be a decor issue and not a hospitality issue, but I'm going to throw it in there because it matters to me. We want 24-hour stays. I want to be able to stay for 24 hours. Maybe during busy season you can't do that. But when your hotel is empty and I still got to check out at 10 a.m., when your Airbnb is not booked tomorrow, and I still got to check out at 10 a.m.? That's the first thing an Airbnb host could do. Nobody's checking in tomorrow, and my housekeeper can come later. Would you like an extra two hours? A lot of times people are going to say no because they probably already booked their flight out. But what a nice, thoughtful thing to do, an offer. What a nice off offer to make to people. Ask your housekeeper, can you come a little later? And if so, let me offer these extra hours back to this person. When we were on the cruise, I know I keep talking about the cruise, but it was amazing. It was amazing, amazing. When we were on the cruise, the, uh, our room attendant, he would be like, uh, not the, uh, they had the room ambassador and then the assistant, right? So the assistant, Ari, he'd be like, unfortunately, Ms. Perry, tonight we're going to take one more hour from you, right? Because time kept changing. We kept moving through time zones. And so we kept losing hours. He said, we kept, we're going to, unfortunately, we're going to take one more hour from you tonight. Uh, I'll check with the captain when we finish to see when you'll get those back. Right? <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks, Ari. I want my four hours back or six, five hours. I think we changed five different times, four or five different times. Yeah, I want my hours back. Right? It doesn't take a whole lot to um, go from there's no customer service here to there's customer service here, especially with people who aren't super demanding. I would guess that. It's just like everywhere else in life, you're going to run into one-third of the people are not super demanding. One-third of the people are medium, and then one-third of the people are super demanding. If you don't like those numbers, hospitality is not for you. It's not for you, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. LaVon says, if you don't like it, don't do it, <laughs> right? It's pretty simple. Yes, okay? So all of you out there, anybody out there interested in the hospitality industry for yourself, my friend Katrina's not here, but she would raise her hand if she was here. 
right? Anybody else interested in, in it? Interested in it? Those are basic things that you can do that will make people say, ah, the hospitality. When we checked into our Airbnb, she had a, now we paid good money for that Airbnb in Mauritius, okay? I want you to know that. That was a lot of money. Uh, but she had someone cook food for us, and we had a full dinner when we got there. There was a full dinner in the refrigerator. It was like curry chicken with rice and some vegetables, right? Probably didn't cost her, and we ate it for two or three days, and we actually had to throw it out. We ate, we ate it, we, it, she made so much that we ended up throwing some away. I may have booked it for three people and not two. I think I may have booked it in case Katrina was coming. I may have told her we had three people coming. But anyway, there was so much food. But it probably didn't cost her $30, right? We paid her, I paid her thousands and thousands of dollars for that room. It didn't cost her all that much to do that little extra thing. But I'm a real fan of getting there and having good hand soap, right? Good hand soap, it doesn't take a whole lot. It doesn't take a whole lot. Let me see, I'm really far behind in the chat. I'm just gonna do a big old scroll. Ah, Margaret W., my daughter moved to Vegas and has lived in an Airbnb room for a year. Full housekeeping services included. Good, yeah, so this is a thing, right? This is, this is a thing. There are people who are full-time in Airbnbs, right? I've, been, I've stayed in Airbnbs between house sits and Airbnbs and my parents' house, right, uh, since 2015. We're going on eight years, right? Seven and a half years of me staying in, of me being a hospitality industry patron. There are people who are living like that. We're not talking about four-day vacation twice a year, right? There are people who are living in the hospitality industry and really need uh, good hospitality. Working twice as hard, says I'm in Thailand, and the hospitality here has been extremely poor the last couple of months, very disappointed. I think that in Thailand, that's a place where you can find reviews where people will share their experiences because the tourists in Thailand go to those places for the hospitality, right? They're going to Thailand to be treated like royalty for, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month. Uh, and so I think reviews can solve some of that problem. Read the reviews of a place before you go and you'll find out, um, you'll find the places where they do do good hospitality. Because Thailand, you can get it. You just need to get to the right places. Mar says, it's true about San Jose. It's a pass-through for me. I know. I know. I think the best I can hope for in San Jose is that my house can be cute. <laughs> if, I, if my house is cute, then that'll be better, right? Pinky says, Airbnbs in San Francisco are expensive, so I house sit when I want to visit there and the surrounding areas. That's right. Me too. So my new house sitter toolkit is at housesit.vicarious.com slash toolkit. Let me link to that. If you have not heard of house sitting, and you did not know that people were staying in other people's homes to get free accommodation and take care of their pets to get free accommodation, let me introduce you to house sitting. Download my new house sitter toolkit at housesit.vicarious.com slash toolkit. A lot of black women in this community get to get free accommodation around the world by house sitting. Whether you want to house it for a house that has a cat or 16 dogs. I've done a house sit for eight dogs before. It was work, and I wouldn't recommend it to somebody who needs rest. But if you're okay with working for a few days, I've done that, right? Uh, house sitting is a wonderful way to be someplace in the world and not pay for that place to stay. And because you're staying in people's homes, there is an opportunity to get some real luxury accommodation. I've stayed in some real luxury homes. Uh, in different in places in the world, in the U.S., in the Netherlands, in Mexico. Uh, I don't know that any of my London and U.K. No, I stayed in one in Brighton that I would call a luxury home. Yeah, right. There's an opportunity to experience real luxury and hospitality because a lot of these hosts are really good at it. A lot of um, trust, trusted house sitters hosts are really good at hospitality because a lot of them really like to travel and they experience good hospitality so they know how to give it. So get my new house sitter toolkit. If you already know you want a house sit, go ahead and join trusted house sitters. I'm going to go ahead and put the link here and I'll put it in the description of this video later. Go ahead and join trusted house sitters and get started. Putting it off is just just means that you're losing opportunities, right? Putting it off, putting off joining trusted house sitters just means you're missing out on something awesome. 
right? So go ahead and join, get started. I had last house sat, I guess, October and November in Costa Rica, in, in Costa Rica. And I have another Costa Rica house sit coming up May 14th or 15th to, I believe, the 20th. So I'll be back in Costa Rica then for that house sit. Oh, Nicole and Sean heading to Italy for another house sit. Ah, congratulations. We just had a meetup in Lisbon and I met, I got her name on my phone, who is heading to Belgium to house sit with her husband and her son. Uh, heading to house sit, to heading to Belgium to house sit for a month. Tadasi. Hi, Tadasi, if you're here. She's heading to Lisbon to house sit. Now, she actually heard of house sitting from somebody else, right? I was like, do I get the credit for that? She was like, well, kind of. And I was like, it's okay if I don't. She learned house sitting through someone else in another travel community that she's in. And her husband and she and her husband and her son have been house sitting uh, as to travel, to, to go places. They live in Lisbon now. I believe she's from Chicago, which is why we got along, because you know I love me some black women from Chicago. Uh, she's from Chicago, but they live in Portugal, in, on the beach, and they travel around Europe by house sitting. Europe? Mm -mm. No, they don't. They travel around the world by house sitting, because they also house sat in Thailand, I believe, for a full month or two, for quite a while. Okay, so let me introduce you to house sitting. Get my new house sitter toolkit. It'll help introduce you to house sitting. That. And, you know, you can just pull up a video on my channel, go to my channel, type in house sitting, pull up a video, watch a video about it, and then go ahead and get started. Go ahead and get started. Ah, Donna says, Stephanie's house sitting mentorship helped me. Now I am planning to use it to visit family in expensive San Francisco, right? Ex San Francisco is expensive. Go to expensive places by house sitting. If you don't want to pay for that place to stay, get you a house sit, right? I tried to book a house sit in Grenada. I just couldn't get things to work out for me. I knew the specific week that I wanted to be in Grenada because I was going to Grenada in the Caribbean. I was going to a conference in Puerto Rico. I needed to back to squeeze in this week in Grenada. And so I interviewed for, I think, three different house sits in Grenada, and I just couldn't get the, any house sit that worked for my dates. Um, but yeah, that's how we go to expensive places. Sometimes I do spend money on expensive travel, as you well know, right? But a lot of that is because a lot of times I don't spend money on accommodation. I, don't, I didn't spend money on accommodation May, June, July, when I was in Palm Springs. House it. And, house, and Palm Springs ain't cheap. And then a good part of October and November, I didn't spend money on a place to stay. House it. So then I can be on a yacht. <laughs> then I can go on a cruise. Do it. I'm not, we're not kidding when we say it's amazing and you'll love it. If you're a friend of animals, if you like cats or dogs or chickens or horses or rabbits, you don't even have to like all of them or birds. If you like any type of animal, I think you should be house sitting to get free accommodation. Sometimes. You don't have to do it back to back like I've done, but sometimes. Yes, visit expensive places via house sitting, even attend big events or expensive or crowded places via house sitting. That's right. I went to, I tried to go to Essence Fest by house sitting, but Essence, it was the year that of COVID and Essence Festival was canceled, but I still had a New Orleans house sit and I still went because they still went on their trip. Yeah. I went, to, I did go to Grenada, Leslin. Leslin says, I wish you were able to. Grenada is my home and I'm partial. Such a wonderful place to be. I went to Grenada. I just paid. <laughs> I went to Grenada. I just paid for my own place to stay uh, and because I couldn't get the house sit to work out for me. But they, it surprised me how many house sits were available, but they were available for like the week or two before. There's a lot of medical students from the U.S. who go to medical school in Grenada. And they all were off at the same time and looking for house sitters. But it just wasn't when I needed it to be. I think there was one. I think I interviewed for three, even though... Uh, okay, because I let me talk to them and see what the dates are and whatever, whatever. See if there's some flexibility. Um, but it just they didn't work out. And then one of them, one of them, one of the three was actually for the time I was going to be in town. But she picked somebody else. Can you believe that? So, but but and then she emailed. Then she messaged me afterwards and like was like, oh, what about these dates? Like, 
later, but I just was leaving Grenada. I didn't have, I couldn't do it for her. Uh, so I did. I visited Grenada. It was beautiful. That was January. I was there. I was there. Uh, Leslie said my mom, her mom would have put me up for, thank you. I'm going back. I'm going back. My coach lives in Grenada. And so I'm going back. I'll be back sometime soon. Grenada was beautiful. The water was warm. Uh, food was good. I don't think I had a meal in Grenada where I was like, mm, eh. I enjoyed the food. I enjoyed the water. Uh, and it's a beautiful island. So I'll be back. I'll go back. And I got proposed to by a man at the, <laughs> at the, uh, at the like the national park or whatever. So I probably I think I have a fiance in Grenada too. So I'll be back. <laughs> Nicole LaShawn is letting you know she's house sat with her daughter and her dog, right? Doesn't have to be just you. It can be just you, but doesn't have to be. We talked to the gallivanting grandma who was Diamond, who I finally got to meet just last uh, the other day in Lisbon. Uh, and she's house sitting right now with her friend, with her bestie, right? They've been house sitting since I think January. If you like, if you're a friend of animals and you want to travel to some places and get some free places to stay, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and house sit. <laughs> Lesson says Grenadian men are wonderful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, maybe one day I'll go back and holler at my fiance. See what, see what he's up to. <laughs> I don't know his first name. I know his last name was Pierre. <laughs> I know his last name was Pierre, but I don't remember his first name. I don't know if I asked him his first name. All right, friends. Uh, so if you're into, if you're considering being a, becoming a person into hospitality, these are things we think you should think of. Anything else? Anybody else have anything to say? Now that I've gotten all my gripes out. Anything I missed about it? Uh, we've told you what things that hosts have done that have been amazing, things that hosts, hosts have done that have been awful. Let's now transition to cities being inhospitable because there are some cities that are inhospitable and Paris is one of them. I've never flown into Charles de Gaulle Airport and been like, oh, that was an okay experience. It's always the worst. Either if I'm coming from the U.S., the immigration line is the pits, I mean, miles long. You know, you know when the flights land. You know when people are coming. All, all it takes is a little scheduling, a little organization to know when flights are coming, right? Uh, this time it was no wheelchair came to get Connie Perry off the plane. Nobody. We sat on the plane. The new crew came. They started cleaning the plane. Nobody came. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't a terribly long stroll. So we took our time and we did it. But like, it's on the ticket. They came and got her in Lisbon. It's on the ticket. This should be an automatic thing. Uh, yeah, Paris, I would think, to me, Paris is, the airport makes Paris inhospitable. Charles de Gaulle Airport makes Paris an inhospitable place. Uh, Fixing the, the, the first experience that people have in your place can make you seem much more hospitable. Now, maybe they don't care about tourists and visitors, right? That's the impression I get. That's, that's what I get, and that's, I'm assuming they're perfectly fine with that impression. They don't care about us. They don't care. But when you go other places where they seem to be hospitable and welcome tourists, it makes you want to go back to those places, I want to go back to Bermuda, even though being in Bermuda in April meant uh, we didn't get in the water. It was cold. That Atlantic Ocean was cold, right? Uh, but I want to go back to Bermuda, even though I didn't do the things that I usually love to do on vacation. I didn't get in the water. That's about all I love to do. <laughs> we didn't go on a little boat tour, which is a thing that I sometimes do in places because it was we were about to get on a cruise. So, uh, and I still want to go back to Bermuda. And there aren't a whole lot of places where I'm like, oh, I want to go back, right? Usually it's like, saw it, did it. I'm good. But I want to go back. And part of it is the hospitality that they, show, that they showed us. The ho did I tell you all the housekeeper in the hotel gave my mom her phone number? She came knocking on my door. My mom had already checked out and gone downstairs or gotten her stuff and gone downstairs. She came knocking on my door. Please. 
give my phone number to your mother. Now, she wasn't even my mom's housekeeper. This was just a different housekeeper. <laughs> this was just a different housekeeper on the floor. <laughs> Please give my phone number to your mother. She said, I live 11 minutes away from here. Next time she comes back, I'll take her around and I'll show her X, Y, and Z. I guess they had a conversation about where we had been or where we hadn't been, right? Um, hospitality, right? That's, it, Bermuda makes it clear that they are interested in you being there and enjoying it and coming back. Thank you, right? So it makes you want to go back to a place. But there are cities that are inhospitable. There are cities that are inhospitable to everyone. There are cities that are inhospitable to people with mobility issues. There are in cities that are inhospitable to LGBTQ plus people, right? And those are things that you need to look up before you go. If you are in a category where regular, you need more than, I don't want to say regular, but if you need some special accommodation, right? Because mobility issues, then you need to be looking that up before you go places. If you're in a place where you know, if you, if you know that there are places in the world where people treat you bad because of X, Y, Z, then you need to look that up before you go. The only exception I would make is the do they like black people in location, right? So do they arrest gay people is different from do they like black people. You need to look up what is the deal. With what are their like rules, laws regarding being a gay person in that town or that country? Okay, but do they like black people in whatever country or city? Is probably the least helpful thing to look up. It's not helpful. It's not helpful because if you come from the United States of America, <laughs> it's probably not going to be worse than what you have already experienced. It's probably going to be better than the way it is in your own city, right? You live in Greensboro. And every shopping center is called something, something plantation. This is a shopping center. Why is it called something, something plantation? You got to go out to eat at the plantation every time. So it's probably less. The Do they like black people in whatever question is probably better. They like black people better than your town likes black people. Right. If you're from the U.S., that's probably not a helpful question. But. What are the accommodations for people with mobility issues? Sure, absolutely. You need to look that up because some places are inhospitable, right? Mexico is inhospitable. Cobblestone streets and sidewalks, trees, roots, pulling up the tile or the bricks. It's inhospitable. They may have, Rashida said, you go to a street, they may have the curb cut on one side for you to, for the wheelchair to get down, but they don't have the curb cut on the other side for you to get back up, right? Some places are inhospitable. So those, but so there, those are things you need to look up. I, but I do think that do they like black people in blank is not a helpful thing to look up, right? The answer is yes. They like black people better than your city likes black people. Leave it at that. Okay. I will be taking a cruise to San Juan, Puerto Rico and, so, and surrounding islands. Enjoy it. That's wonderful, Ernestine. Hi, enjoy that. Dr. Kimberly Madison, have you heard about Arlen's new yacht water? I saw it, I think on Instagram. I think I saw yacht water. I think I saw a bottle on Instagram. Yeah, like, I think... <laughs> I think that's a ridiculous question. If you live in such and such plantation, your neighborhood is called such and such plantation because they want to, to keep black people out and they thought black people wouldn't stay in a place called such and such plantation. So I think you, right, not you, Faith Journey, but you person who's Googling that, I think that's a ridiculous question. I personally think that's a, do they like black people in such and such is a ridiculous question when you come from a place where they don't like black people. All right. But there are things, there are times when you need to look things up. Find out, is your city, is the city you're going to or the country you're going to, is it hospitable to you? And Donna says, not just you, but to your friends or family members. If, you've, if you're considering scouting out a place, living there, are your friends and family members going to be able to be comfortable visiting you there? Right? These are things that we need to take into consideration. But I think, do they like black people in whatever? It's not a thing to take into consideration. Personal opinion. You ain't got to believe me. That's my personal opinion. 
Some of y'all are from places where you seem to have never experienced white people. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be like, where do y'all live? <laughs> where do you live? Delaware is pretty black, and Wilmington, Delaware is a pretty black city. I lived in a pretty black city for a decent part of my adult life. And still, I know how white people are. Some people be just so surprised. <laughs> I'm like, where are you from? I don't know. Zara, hey, what is your tech setup with moving around quite often? I use my laptop. I use this here light <laughs> from Loom Cube, so I look glorious. Don't I look glorious? This um, Airbnb is pretty low light. Well, I guess it's the day. First of all, we're in the middle of the city, so there's buildings everywhere. So we're not going to get like a flood of daylight. But also, it's a cloudy day. So I got my little light on here, so I look cute. Um, and my laptop. An extension cord, which is always helpful. My tech setup is really basic, really fundamental. If you are a person, oh, let me check and see. I think my YouTube success challenge is sold out. Let me double check. I added in, so don't be mad at me, those of you who got in on the, the last space. I added in two more spaces because I wanted to. <laughs> because uh, one woman uh, is not, she registered, but she's actually not sure if she's coming. So I added in two more spaces. So we're at 30. Let me look and see. Let me look and see if, okay. So there are two, right now, there are two last spots available for the YouTube Success Five Day Challenge, which starts on Monday. I teach YouTubers who are already YouTubing and or black women who are not yet on YouTube but are ready to go ahead and make their video. I teach you how to get clear on who your channel is for. I teach you how to find out what those, the people your channel is for, right? We'll call them your ideal audience. I teach you who is your ideal audience and then what is your ideal audience already watching? And then what kinds of videos can you make to bridge, to create a bridge, to walk them from what they're already watching to your channel? That's a type of video that you'll learn how to make in the challenge. And then we make the video together and then you have community with the other 30 women who are your challenge mates, your cohort. Uh, the YouTube Success Challenge starts on Monday and I did add in two more spots. So there are 30 people registered, but I added in two more spots because one person is not sure that she's gonna come. You know, anyway, so I'm adding one spot doesn't make sense. I like to do things in eights if possible. So 32 made a lot more sense to me than 30 anyway. The challenge registration link is vicarious.com slash challenge. I'm going to try and copy and paste this for you in a reasonable amount of time. Right here. Vicarious.com slash challenge. So if you go ahead and sign up now, you can join us Monday through Friday. Group coaching is at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Right? So 3 p.m. Eastern time next week is a no-go for you. Don't join the challenge. Okay? But if you're able to come to at least four of the five group coaching sessions next week at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and you're willing to commit to learning how to make a particular type of YouTube video and making that video, even if it's not a video, a type of video that you had thought about making before, right? Uh, then come and join us. You're going to be able to launch a YouTube channel next week. Right? It's pretty awesome. If you're a black woman and you have something to say, right? If you have something that you want to share with other black, with other people, I don't care who you share it with, frankly, right? My stuff is for black women, but your stuff can be for whomever. And there are some people here. Let's do this. Anybody here not a black woman who wants to out yourselves, you can say, we're also here. Sometimes people are really afraid of if I say it's only, it's, if I say it's for black women, then other people won't come or other people won't, I, I might miss out on something. Well, there are people here right now who are not black women, who are watching, who are enjoying, who are learning, and who are forming community with themselves, just not with, out here, right? Uh, so anyway, join the challenge, vacarious.com slash challenge. If you have something to say and you think somebody's life would be a little bit better because you put your stuff on YouTube, right? Maybe a little happier maybe a little more peaceful, maybe a little more financially abundant or spiritually sound or just like they'll have more laughter and joy. If you think you could create something on YouTube that would make somebody's life or day 
a little bit better. I invite you to go ahead and do it. YouTube has leveled the playing field. Just like we talked about, the Airbnb platform helped anybody get into the hospitality industry, right? The people who wanted to get in, Airbnb is like, welcome. YouTube has done that for those of us who want to do media stuff, right? Or less media and more like just talky stuff. <laughs> you just want to be talky. You just want to have community. You just want to share with people your thoughts. YouTube has said, oh, come welcome. Do it. Do it. You don't need anybody's permission. You don't need a studio executive to say you and not you. You can have a talk show, but you can't have a talk show. If you want to have a talk show and you don't have a YouTube channel, what are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? <laughs> Right? I know a lot of people who want to have a talk show and they don't make YouTube videos. I'm like, what? it's right there. Have a talk show. And Pierre, when is the next challenge? I can't come next week. Good question. The next challenge, Clarice and I just put that on, the, we changed that on the calendar. We had to make an adjustment. It is June, I'll tell you, June. I'm going to keep saying June until I get there. Must be the 17th. June, uh-uh. June 10th to 15th is the next YouTube challenge. June 10th to 15th. So this next one starts on Monday, April 22nd. 3 p.m. Eastern time is group coaching. If that doesn't work for you, we're going to do it at the same time on June 10th to 15th. Okay? All right. Fear is not a reason to not do things, okay? It's okay to do things even when you're afraid. So just, I wanna do it, but I'm afraid is not a valid reason to not do it, especially when you know that there's gonna be a whole bunch of other people together who are also afraid, and they're gonna do it together, right? We're gonna do it together. So welcome, okay? Two spots, so probably by the time, you know, within a couple of hours, those two spots will be gone. Uh, so I haven't, I didn't share on, like usually on Instagram, I share a little countdown. I shared, a, I did share the two spots available countdown, but then I went and added two more spots. Uh, and so, but, but by the time we're done, good. By the time we're finished, you know, with this live stream, good. Maybe by the time, I don't know, by the end of lunchtime for y'all, they'll probably be full. But June is coming. So go ahead and get on my wait list at vicarious.com slash... Newsletter. Yeah. No. Yeah. Vacarious.com slash newsletter. No, that's not it. It's usually also vacarious.com slash challenge. When the challenge is open, though, I don't remember how you get on the wait list. Oh, I know. I do know. The toolkit. Vacarious.com slash coaches is how you can get on the wait list. Okay. Okay. Rashi says, check your email later. Okay, we will do. All right. Yeah, we, it, it's okay to be afraid of things. We're, we do things that we're afraid of all the time. So just add this to the list. It's okay. Time does not shrink fear. Let me do a little bit of the coaching that I do inside of the challenge. This is the thing I always say in the challenge. Time does not shrink fear. We think if we give something more time, we'll be less afraid. But that's not true. That's never been true in your life. In your whole life, waiting longer has never helped you be less afraid. It just made things more urgent, like, oh, now I have to do it. I run out of time. Time doesn't shrink fear, right? Having already experienced the thing shrinks fear. Having already done it helps you feel more confident. But time is not a confidence booster. Community can be. Having other people with you, doing the thing that you're afraid to do, that can help your confidence. Uh, but time doesn't shrink fear, so waiting, doesn't, waiting is not helpful. If Seriously, some of you have something to say, something to share with people. If you want to go ahead and share it, please do. My life has changed, right? So here we are in Paris. I'm in Paris with Connie Perry for the month of Connie, which, listen, we're splitting. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, but we, but these this would not be able to happen if I hadn't gone ahead and made YouTube videos even when I was really afraid. Started my YouTube channel very afraid. Started talking about house sitting and house sitter and made house sitter school. Uh, became a trusted house sitters affiliate. Created with Rashida Exodus Summit. All of the things that bring me the money to live out my dreams. Get get a monetized YouTube channel. All of the money is related to me saying, let me go ahead and start this YouTube channel. Let me go ahead and do it. It's scary. I had accountability partners and every time we got together, I'd be like, oh, I didn't do it this time. I think we may have met every Sunday or I don't think it was once a month. I remember I had to tell them a lot of times. No, I didn't make my channel. No, I didn't start my channel. No, I didn't start my channel. And finally, I did it. Now, I'm not afraid to make a YouTube video. I remember how scary it was. I remember how, oh my God, it was really, 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 really scary. Now, piece of cake. I've done live streams where I'm like, oops, I forgot to put on a real shirt. <laughs> I got a swim top on. I'm outside. I forgot to put on a real shirt, right? <laughs> Whereas before, it was a whole production just before I could make a video. Donna says, Donna's a coach. Donna is Plant Your Seeds of Transformation. That's, that's the, her YouTube channel name also. Waiting doesn't clear up worry, anxiety, or fear. I refuse to let the fear block me. Yeah. If we waited to do we, a lot of the things in our lives we've done when we were really afraid. We just didn't really have a choice. With YouTube, you feel like you have a choice. And so you're waiting and waiting. But the fear is not going anywhere. Right? <laughs> Dr. Phil, how's that working out for you? Right? Fear's not going anywhere. Waiting, time does not shrink fear. Time does not shrink fear, I promise you. Community can really help with confidence. And so go ahead and get in community with other black women who are doing the same thing. Whatever your thing is, right? We're taught we're past YouTube now. Whatever your thing is, whatever your thing is that you're super afraid to do. Get in community with other people who are doing it. It'll help you. It will help you. Chanel says. Called me out for stalling due to fear. Can we get back to roasting the cities? <laughs> okay, let's go back. Let's get back to roasting the cities in Europe, okay? <laughs> I just want you to know that you have support. The last few weeks, my videos on this channel have been about leaning on your support system. So in, in creating a YouTube channel or starting a business and a YouTube channel that go together, maybe a coaching business or a retreat business or whatever, you have support, right? That support is me and this community. And I've created places for you to come and get that support. The challenge is the first place. If you're not a group person, right? You're not into group coaching. You know, I do individual one-on-one -on -one coaching. I don't have a link though. Let me do this. Uh, I don't have a link. I'll put it in the description. I might, might be able to get it in a reasonable amount of time. Um, I do individual coaching for YouTube things. I don't do individual house sitting coaching, okay? But I do group house sitting coaching if you buy the new house sitter bundle. So get support, get support. Get somebody, get a, get a, have a conversation. Let me get my calendar link. Have a conversation with somebody who can help you. Let your support support you. Let me see if I can find this in a, quickly. For calls with me, I just changed, I just went in and looked at my calendar, so it should be relatively open. Uh, my calendar for the months of February, March, and April, and early April was shut down because of the tra all of the travel that I'm doing. But May should be relatively open. So if you do want to book time with me, actually, let me cl click on my May calendar and see. Yeah, May is rel. I was right about that. May is relatively open. So if you want individual coaching with me, here's the link. Okay, if you want individual coaching with me, this is the link to get that. But the community inside of the challenge is unmatched. For the price of individual coaching with me, they're pretty much the price 
almost the same. There's like a $20, $25 difference. The difference between individual coaching with me and going to the challenge is within the challenge, you get a whole community, right? You get those other women. You get, you'll probably find at least one real accountability partner who, can, who you can carry on with. You'll hopefully find some women who you'll want to interview on your channel and or down the line or soon. You can do it soon. And you'll find people who want to interview you, right? So the difference in the price is worth it because that community that you'd be missing if you just got coaching with me um, is really priceless. It's really priceless. The amount of support that you get from other women, from other black women YouTubers, and the accountability and the collaborative opportunities, worth the money, worth the challenge price. Okay? Okay, friends. Uh, Christine, remember turning double Dutch for friends who wouldn't jump in the rope. Yes, <laughs> me. <laughs> That's why I've never learned how to double Dutch. I could turn the rope. I could keep time, but I never learned it because I couldn't jump in. I wouldn't jump in, right? Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. Yeah, time does not shrink fear. I know we think it does. That's why we say, well, I'll just wait. That doesn't help. You still got the same fear. You're just poisoning yourself with those stress hormones, right? When you could have had it over with. The relief that women have that next day, once we make, because we don't make our videos on the last day, because I need time to watch it and give, it feed, give you feedback. We start making, the, most women make their videos on day four of the five-day challenge. And when they come in on day five to coaching, oh, it's Gucci. Some women have made another video by the time they come in. <laughs> They're like, oh, after I made that one, I sat down and made this one, right? From, oh my gosh, I can't do it. I'm going to die. Okay, I feel like I'm going to die if I do this. To, oh, I've already done another one. Okay, I do this now. I'm a YouTuber now. Thank you, right? It's not the time that shrinks the fear. It's the experience. It's the having done it. Only way you can get to that point is to do it. So serious. I'm so serious. Okay. Support is crucial. Hi, Radiant Renewal. Hi. I think you changed your name. Hi. I like it. Yes, right? So you were in my challenge. It was, I'm going to say the very recent, most recent one. I don't know. I think this is you, right? You've changed your name? Yeah. Do it. Okay? Okay. Awkward Black Nomad. Kioka says, I needed to hear this. I'm going to keep going with my channel. Yeah. So a thing that we do wrong, let's, let's, okay, so we've transitioned into a new topic. Surprise. What else is new? I'm Connie Perry's daughter. I can do that. Our new topic is this. You don't, we think we need, I have a second channel called Stephanie Perry Media where I do YouTube stuff. I coach and talk about YouTube more on that channel. I've tried to stop doing that on this channel, but let's go ahead and do that on this channel for now. My other YouTube channel is called Stephanie Perry Media, okay? That is where we do this kind of thing normally, recently. Uh, but here's the thing that I want to say about things. We think we need a certain number of subscribers or a certain number of views to really make an impact, and that's not true, right? A person on your channel who watches a video of yours, gets some help from you, and goes on to live their dream, that's amazing. It's incredible. When you go to a place, a meetup or something, and someone says, I saw your video on X and it helped me. It's why I'm here, right? We just went up in Lisbon. We just had a Lisbon meetup that was like a mashup meetup between Exodus Summit and Our Black Utopia and Blacks at Global. Hi, friends. We just did a mashup meetup. And people in there said, oh, I was like, oh, hi, you live in Lisbon? And she was like, yeah, I live in Lisbon because of you. Because... Connie Perry's on the phone in here. Yeah, she's okay. Hello. Do you mind going to another room? Okay, thank you. I, I'm here. I am giving this good talk, and she, <laughs> here she go in the background having a conversation on the phone. 
I, right now, I'm like, oh, do you live in Lisbon? She's like, uh, I live in Lisbon because of you. My husband and I live in Lisbon because of you. And this life is pretty nice. Thank you. You don't need 161,000 subscribers for that to happen. You need a core group. And if money is the thing, sometimes we think we need a lot of subscribers to make money. You don't. You need to have something that people can pay you for and something that is appropriately priced so that you feel good about delivering it, whether it's a coaching call or a group coaching program or a retreat or a book or something. You don't need a whole bunch of subscriber. You don't need a crazy subscriber account for YouTube to really feed a business and transform somebody's life. What you need is to have a channel, have a place for people to go watch and learn from you, have a place for them to maybe get a little more from you if you want, and have a place for them to thank you. Have a time and place for them to tell you what you did for them. It's a selfish reason that, we, that I love the meetups. I've, the, re, the main reason for the meetups is so we can meet and so you can meet each other. But the other, the selfish, the, the tertiary reason is so I can get some, let me know. <laughs> let me know what you're doing. Are you house sitting? Have you moved abroad? Have you taken a sabbatical? Keep me posted, right? If you don't have a place for people to tell you what your work has done for them yet, make that the next thing you do. Make a post on the YouTube community tab and make it a place for people to say, oh yeah, you know what? I watched your video on X and it was really helpful. It helped me do X, Y, Z. Make a post in, on Instagram or on your inner reels, a reel or on TikTok or somewhere, and let people tell you what you did for them. I believe in that. Okay? I don't go to a meetup without somebody crying in my face. I go to a meetup and I try to look real cute, and then here she go. <laughs> here you go, crying in my face. Uh, but I can, I can hold on. I can hold on. I'm a cancer, so I'm going to cry with you. But I can hold on and just cry later. <laughs> I can can hold on just a little bit and then I'll cry later. You can cry now and then I'll cry later. Yeah, Wisdom and Color says I'll be, I'll join the June one. I'll be traveling next. Oh, challenge. Okay, I thought you were talking about something else because the, our Black Utopia and Blacks at Global are hosting a meetup in Portugal in June. It's going to be a to-do. It's going to be a thing. Okay. So, okay, but let me get back to this. Yeah, so I don't talk, I try not to talk too much about YouTube stuff on this channel because I created the second channel called Stephanie Perry Media. And some of y'all, frankly, don't need to do things. Some of you are here because you wanna do less. And the more I talk about YouTube, some of you will start to feel like, oh, maybe I should do more, right? I want you to have to go someplace else to learn from that, learn to learn that stuff. So I made it a second YouTube channel. Um, but I do think pretty much everybody should be on YouTube, not necessarily today. Right? You may be in a season of rest and doing less and not sharing. That's fine. I'm down with that. Okay? But if you're in a season of sharing, of forming community, of supporting and fostering support and receiving support, go ahead and get on YouTube. And if you're already on YouTube, keep going. If you're on YouTube and you do feel like you're not growing like you should, I will help you. My challenge is good. My stuff that I put together, it's good, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I don't hold back. I share my stuff because I want to, because <laughs> I want to. Part of it is why I only, I only have black women in my group coaching. People come to me for individual coaching who are not black women, right? But people in the group things, only black women. And I want black women to win, so I share my stuff. I share it out there. Or anyone, no one who's come to my coaching has gotten a, hold, a held back version of me, okay? You, you know, I don't do that. I just don't do that. I think it's been pretty obvious, pretty evident that I, if I know something, I say something. I tell something. Uh, but, I, but the thing that YouTube has done for me is the same thing it does for other people. I'm not exceptional in this. Uh, but I think we need to re remember or recognize that some of the things we, the, some of the metrics that we're looking to hit or the milestones, they're vanity metrics. Those milestones don't matter. 
Getting monetized, getting a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, that matters because that's when you start getting a piece of the ad revenue. You want that, right? Until you get that, you're, lo you're leaving money on the table. After that, not too much. This, the, that number, the subscriber count, it doesn't matter all that much. What matters is how my community doing? Is there a place for us to get together? Are they making progress on this thing that I keep talking about? Am I listening to their needs? And do I hear what they are asking me to do? And do I want to do it or not? Okay, so we don't need to worry about the vanity metrics and comparison and keeping up. There are plenty of channels who have a million subscribers. I'm at 161,000, right? There are channels with a million subscribers. There are channels with five, six times the number of subscribers who aren't doing a fraction of the, making a fraction of the impact that my channel is making and aren't making a fraction of the money my channel is making. Okay? So those numbers, some of those outside numbers don't matter. I do YouTube coaching and I do business coaching. I see these as a way to get freedom from work-centric life. I don't want my job or my work to be the boss of me. I want to be able to come to Paris and Provence with my mom when she says she wants to go, even if it's 55 degrees outside and rainy, right? I want the freedom to do those things. YouTube plus my coaching business has done that for me. And, you know, I'm sharing it. I want you to do it, too, if that's what you want, okay? So YouTube Success Challenge happens next Monday or Monday coming up, and it happens again mid-June. Uh, and then the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge, which is a different challenge that Rashida and I host together, Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge is probably happening soon, okay? Waitlist is exodusummit.com slash next three clients. So I teach this same idea in two different directions. The YouTube challenge is about growing your own platform, growing your own channel, growing your own community, okay? Rashida and I also host together, we host the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge, which is about getting your message on other people's platforms. It's the one-two punch. Actually, there's like a three-piece. The three-piece is my platform, other people's platforms, and paid ads, but I haven't figured out paid ads. They're not working for me, so I, listen, I don't even talk about it, okay? Okay, but the one-two, this is really a three-piece combo, but if we're going to call it a one-two punch, it is my platform and getting my message on other people's platforms, and I teach those in two different challenges, okay? My, your platform is the YouTube Success Challenge. Getting your message on other people's platforms is the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge, okay? And we, I do that with Rashida. Yeah, we just had a meetup in Lisbon. Thursday? No. Wednesday? Wednesday. I don't know my days of the week. Wednesday. We just had an awesome meetup in Lisbon. 30, 29 people. And men were allowed. There were men there for the first time ever because it was a mashup meetup. There were men there. Rick was there. Halisi's husband. Oh, the other husband who was there. And then Malcolm was there who works with Krishan in Blacks at Global. I'm sorry. Listen, it's going to come to me when I'm looking at the pictures. I'm going to be like, that's who the other couple was. Yes, there was a couple, another couple there. Uh, so there were men there. If you're inside of the Exodus Summit Facebook community, you have to check the, the events tab. As far as I know, Provence, my meetup, is the next one on the calendar. I think there's also a meetup coming up that Francis is about to create for Orlando, I think. Orlando, Florida is about to have a meetup. Tampa just had a meetup. Like, you inside of the Exodus Summit Facebook community, you should be, the meetup tab, this should be your, that should be a place you go to, to find things out. Because, like I've said, getting in community, that's the way. <laughs> getting in community who are into the thing, with people who are into the things you're into, that's the way. So inside of the Exodus Summit meetup, inside of the Exodus Summit group, at exodusummit.com slash community. There's an events tab. Just keep an eye on it. Go there. Or create an event. You don't have to wait for an event. You can create an event. Okay? Okay. 
Oh, the one in June. This okay. So the one in June is not an Exodus Summit meetup. It is a a an Our Black Utopia and Blacks at Global meetup. I would go to either one of those YouTube channels or both. Might as well go to both. Blacks at Global and Our Black Utopia, and get info. Blacks at Global. If you are already connected with one of them somewhere, you could just holler at them. Uh, I would guess on their Instagram. Let me do one thing at a time. Our Black Utopia. Okay, those are their YouTube channels. They're hosting a June meetup in Lisbon, Portugal together. It's going to be awesome and awesome. We got to meet some of that community already, and it was great. There is some overlap, of course. So some of the Exodus Summit women are members of that community. Uh, so it's going to be a wonderful time. Unfortunately, Rashida and I are not going to be there because we're going to be out on another continent doing things. Yeah. All right. Okay. Nicole LaShawn, just wait. Okay, Nicole's about to go house-sitting in Italy, and she says, just wait. I'm going to meet and marry an Italian chef. Good plan. And we'll be at the next meetup. Okay, good plan. I love it. I love it. The chef, okay, let me tell you. Okay, okay, listen, it's just us here. The chef at the Portugal meetup was a 10 out of 10, okay? Uh, Angolan, I want to say. He was every, every single woman in that meetup was like, okay, but tell me about the chef. <laughs> tell me about the chef. We went to Soul Kitchen in Lisbon for the meetup. Every single, every single, single woman. I was like, okay, it's nice to meet y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing? Tell me about this chef. Uh, there was some disparity on, over whether or not he was single. I don't know. But uh, marrying a chef is a cheat code in life. I recommend it. I, don't, I haven't married a chef, but I would recommend it. Talk to somebody on this channel who had married a chef. And I was like, note to self. <laughs> Marry a chef because I don't like cooking. Uh, okay, Nicole, I'm down with this plan. Okay, let's go ahead and get it into, into full effect. Keep us posted. Keep us posted. Keep us posted, yeah. Faith Journey. There are a lot of people who had dreams and ideas that never came to pass. You can find them at the graveyard. Every, yes, right? A lot of people's dreams die with them. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Put it out in the world. Listen, putting this thing out into the world, right? This thing where I'm like, mm, actually, I don't want to be a hard worker. And I wish more black women would do that. <laughs> actually, I want to travel all the time. And I wish more black women would do that. Mm, actually, you know, I want the things I want in my life. And I don't want the stuff I don't want. I wish more black women would focus on that, right? Saying those things out loud, putting them on YouTube and sharing them with the world has really, really changed my life. I know I say it all the time, and I know some of you don't, know, don't believe it, but I am a different person. And it's just because I was like, here's some thoughts that I've been thinking. I have a whole community, a whole friend, more than friend group. Just because I was like, mm, here's some thoughts that I've been thinking. Let me put them on YouTube. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it really did change everything for me. Mm. It's okay to be afraid and still do it. Okay? All right. So others of you also want to marry a chef? Okay. I'm with it. <laughs> the new movement is vacarian hookup. I can't hook Nicole. Listen, if I could hook Nicole up, I would have my own chef. Okay. <laughs> I can't hook her up. All, all we can do, not all, some of you might be able to hook her up, okay? But all I can do is create a space where she can safely say, this is what she wants in her life. And we can say, I want it for you. Now, maybe somebody can hook her up, right? But, you know, if I knew how to do that, I would have done that for myself. <laughs> Ms. Molly says, listen, be, real, be for real. Chefs work long hours and they're temperamental. What I think I know about chefs is they have drug and alcohol problems. I think that's the thing I know about chefs in the real world. Okay, but listen, that's not the kind of chef Nicole wants. Okay? She wants a whole, 
healed, aware, emotionally intelligent chef, not one of those others, okay? Oh, listen, I'm chef. I'm a chef married to a chef. Still need somebody to cook for me. I can believe that. I can believe that. Okay, friends. All right. So my dad called my mom. So now she's in there talking to him. He has no idea it's time for me to be on YouTube because he has no idea what I do. Okay. <laughs> Whereas she was parked in her seat prepared for the live stream. And she even said, because I went to the bathroom at like two minutes before it was time to go live. She said, if you're not ready on time, do you want me to start the live stream for you? Right. Because she knows what's up. Whereas he is like, oh, do you go live? <laughs> oh, is this Saturday? Oh, you, you, you have a program on Saturday? Okay. He, no clue. He has no clue. Uh, so he's calling to check up on her and see, what her, her, uh, see how her trip is going. So that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I want it. Nice enough. I want a husband with a boat. Stephanie started something. Yes. Figure out what you want and get it. Listen, I believe in that. I believe it. I believe it. Yoga Bliss Dance. I love her clarity of intention. It's key to manifesting. He'll walk into her life, but be open. We got, I think so. You have to know what you want. I think you do have to be able to say what you want. And I think it's nice to have a place where people will say it. It's nice to have a place, place where people will will. will Feel comfortable saying, here's the thing that I want for myself. I love that. I love that about us. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super sticker, Christine. I hope you're still here. You said that this is for Connie Perry for her birthday coffee. Thank you very much. I'll give it to her. Thank you. I'll let her know. I appreciate that. Okay, friends. My mom's birthday was April 15th. It was the day we got off the yacht. They did a really nice birthday thing for her on the yacht. They uh, decorated her room. Marilyn and my mom both had birthdays during the cruise. They decorated their rooms really nicely, gave them a little bouquet of flowers, uh, gave, made them a cake, like all kind of stuff. My mom had rose petals on the floor. Marilyn had lights in her room. They went all out. So it was really wonderful. Uh, that's as far as I went with Connie Perry's birthday. Frankly, her birthday card is still in my suitcase. <laughs> I haven't even given her a birthday card. I'm like, girl, you had a cruise, okay? You, you're sat She's satisfied. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's it. We're, we're almost at the two-hour mark. Um, we've given, we've griped our gripes. <laughs> we've talked, we've transitioned into two and three and four other conversations. So I think I'll let y'all get on with your... Saturdays, it's 6 p.m. here. So we have leftovers, I think, which we'll probably eat for dinner because we went out and saw the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe today. We walked to both today. So I think we're probably in the house for the rest of the night, um, evening. And so we'll see you again soon. Next Saturday, I'll be in Provence. Uh, don't tell my mom, but I haven't booked our place yet. I'm torn between one place or two. I don't know if I want to book one place or two separate places in Provence. Do we want to go? I'm thinking part of me wants to be up, up high and down low on the water. It's not super warm. It's only in the 60s. So we don't really need to be on the water. I'm torn. I'm torn. But anyway, next time we get together, we'll be in Provence. And there is a Provence meetup happening, I hope, Sunday after that, uh, I hope. Uh, and then those of you who are right here in Paris, maybe we can have dinner in a day or two. Okay, friends, thanks for stopping in. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you soon. One more thing I want to tell you about the Job Liberation Summit. The price goes up today, to, to or the end of the day today. Today is the last day for Early bird pricing for the Job Liberation Summit that is hosted by Dr. Kimani Norrington Sands and Marissa Price, MSW. They're hosting a summit for, a, it's called the Job Liberation Virtual Summit for Black Women. So I'm going to drop my link for that here. Uh, one more thing I want you to know before we go, okay? The Job Liberation Summit for Black Women is, um, I'm just going to give you the link that I know, vicarious.com slash job liberation. I made my own link. I just want you to know that early bird pricing ends today. Today is the last day. I've sent some emails about it. Uh, but if you look at that list and you see Anne-Marie, who talks about getting severance pay, 
if you see Libria Jones, who talks about getting remote work, if you see Dr. Robin, who talks about sleep and, and healing from like sleep and recovering your sleep after stress, like fixing your problems, your stress-related sleep problems, right? When you see the people who are speaking at that summit and you're like, oh, this would be helpful for me, okay? I want you to know that it's time to go ahead and register because early bird pricing ends today. Okay. All right. Thank you for letting me add that in there. Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour. I guess it's still morning. What do we say in the evening? Bon. La c'est le bon ton, le le la. Gros poupon. That's what we say in the evening. I don't know the good evening greeting. But bonjour. It's still bonjour for you. So bonjour. Ma jolie. <laughs> Je suis à Paris. I know that. Nous sommes. Nous sommes à Paris. Au revoir. Okay. Have a wonderful Saturday, friends. Talk to you again real soon. Bye.